Rachel. Um, I've been interested recently in like how businesses decide to like for lack of a better term, integrate into meme culture. And you're obviously, you know, you know you're a meme. <laughs> and I was wondering, like, how much, like, I assume initially it wasn't purposeful. How much did you, like, once you realized you were, did you kind of let that lead sort of how you acted towards consumers? And do you have any measurable way of, like, knowing how that affected sales? <laughs> Uh, so I'll, I'll deal with the second part first. It's really, it's really difficult to try and, and measure the impact of one particular meme. <laughs> but I, I will say this, I, I do believe that you know, the memes I was part of, the memes that Mr. Wada or Mr. Miyamoto were part of, I believe it creates a relationship with our consumer. And in the end, having a healthy relationship with our customer drive sales. You know, in terms of how these memes happen, they're not planned. Right? Uh, and uh, you know, it's not something that you can forcibly create. These memes happen. And I, I, I believe that in the end, uh, you know, it's, it's my, uh, my personality, the forthright nature of you know, the passion I have for the business and the category, I think that's what the fans were excited about. Whether it was that first line and that first E3, whether, whether, it's, whether it's the laser beam out of the eye, uh, you know, getting on the balance board and saying my body is <laughs> Opportunities to rise up in a company when the industry as a whole is so male dominated. And so, you know, as, as I highlighted, uh, valuing differences is a leadership function. It is a leadership function. And so, the demographics are going to change. When leaders stand up and say, I want diversity and inclusion in my organization, it's good business and it leads to strong results. And so, a couple stories, right? An African American leading a Japanese company, right? 